Hello everyone, and welcome to the first stage of my reproduction of a 14th century suit of armor. Excusing my shoddy sketches, my rough plan does present a good place to start. Obviously, as much as I would like to, I cannot start with anything exciting or interesting looking, such as the bassinet or great helm, but instead I must pull back each layer to the first garment worn by any man in the mid-14th century, the braids. The braids are a relatively simple pair of what essentially equate to the modern-day boxer shorts. Typically worn under a pair of split hosen, they would be made from linen and, according to contemporary art, would be unfitted and appear bunched up by a waistband. I chose to embark on this as my first stage, as although I have far more experience in blacksmithing or mail working than I do in sewing, I thought that seeing as copious amounts of hand stitching would be inevitable, I needed to make a start on a somewhat risk-free garment. The pattern that I had created was heavily inspired by both the book The Medieval Tailor's Assistant by Sarah Thursfield and by fellow reenactors who have made similar garments. The garment is made of six pieces and is designed to be incredibly loose-fitting to allow for ease of movement. The pieces will be sewn together using a back stitch, which is both very strong and authentic. Although no extant braids survive, other garments of the period do, which utilize a backstitch, and therefore lend validity to using a backstitch in this project. The process, as always, proved to be considerably more difficult than I had anticipated, and with every stitch I began to wish for the simplicity of a sewing machine, However, I am going to make this as authentic as possible, so alas, I sit for hours on end stitching and seething. The fabric is a white linen purchased at Hertz Specialist Fabrics, link in the description, and the thread is waxed linen that I happen to have lying around. Although perhaps it would be more likely for the thread to be white, there is no evidence either way, as no artifacts of this type exist, and furthermore, at least the material of the thread is authentic. On the topic of authenticity, there is no real way for me to escape anachronism in this project, because, firstly, a knight would never sew his own garments, and would typically pay others to do those tasks, perhaps a trained tailor or a seamstress. Secondly, my pitiful attempt at sewing could never match a real authentic garment, as I have neither the time nor desire to dedicate my whole life to one craft such as sewing, whilst a 14th century tailor would have genuinely spent his whole life learning to sew, and therefore would be far better at it than me and his product would look far better as well. However, I am doing the best I can with what I have, and it is far more authentic than the rubbish Hollywood depicts. Stitching now complete, I can demonstrate how the pattern fits together. Firstly, the leg pieces, which are pointed out here, are sewn to the groin piece. Then these are both sewn to the front and back pieces. The pattern is symmetrical except for the waistband holes and points. The waist casing is then sewn onto the top of this assembly. Following this, a waistband made of a strip of linen iron in a way as to hide any fraying is inserted into the two holes reinforced by the medieval buttonhole stitch. The same stitch is used for the holes for the points. The points are used to hold up the hose, which will be demonstrated later. The points are made of a simple 6mm hemp rope. Finally, the bottom of the legs are hemmed and the braids are complete. The next piece of clothing that I would have to make would be the hose. These were two separate legs that would go over the braids and be tied to them to support. What we see in contemporary images is the image of a man whose calves are accentuated by the armour or clothing that he wears. So therefore I'd have to replicate this perfectly with these woolen hooks. However, I would not be able to use measurements. I would have to do this using a toil. This involved me using a spare piece of fabric and pinning it to my leg to try and find the perfect form-fitting 
look while still being able to get my foot and ankle all the way through to reach the other end. I decided to go for a full length pose, utilizing both a sock at the bottom and a trouser that would go all the way up to mid thigh. This was shown in many contemporary images from the time and I felt would give the best level of protection from the elements while I was wearing my male chausses, which I would have to make next. I decided to use the heaviest wool that I had, as it's evident that they were made from wool, as we can find a few contemporary examples that have survived, and also wool is one of the few materials from the period that stretches in a way that would allow for such a form-fitting look. The whole ordeal of pinning this to my legs was disastrous and incredibly painful. I must have pricked myself a thousand times, however, it seems to have been successful in the end, as I ended up with a twirl that was relatively form-fitting and allowed for me to get my foot all the way through without destroying the pins. It did nearly bring me to tears, however, and it was the source of much anguish throughout this whole period of time. Once I'd finished my twirl, I could then copy this over onto a sheet of wool. I then cut out the exact shape and began to pin it to my leg again. Now the problem with the twirl that I had made was that it was in fact of a different material with a different level of stretchiness. So from this, I then had to redo the whole process of pinning it to my leg again with just as painful and sharp pins with the wool, which was both terrifying and painful. It was terrifying because if I messed up on this, that would be my wool gone. So I cut very loosely around the pattern that I had originally made and then began to pin it to my leg. Once this was done, I could begin sewing. I used a back stitch again, as it was the contemporary stitch that was found on most of their clothing, especially clothing that was form fit. This was a very tedious process, however, it required very little attention while I did it, so it allowed me to just put on TV and continue sewing. Once the sewing was finished, I then had to hem the top and sew on the foot. This ankle joint was the, again the source of much anguish and pain, however, I finally managed to get it right. They are asymmetrical compared to each other, unfortunately. Um, the left foot appears to be slightly smaller than the right foot in comparison to the ankle, but considering this is an arming garment and going to be under male, it won't be visible and I don't think it's too much of a problem. Maybe one day I'll go back and make a nicer pair, but at the moment, it's what I'll make do with. Once all of the hemming was finished, I made two buttonhole stitches on each leg, which was following contemporary examples, and this would allow for the clothing points that I had put into my braids then tie up the trouser legs, the hose legs, and keep them up on my, on my legs. The overall outcome was relatively good. It's not as form-fitting as I wanted, but this is probably because I used incredibly thick wool. Next time, or when I make a pair of civilian hose, I'll make it out of thinner, more stretchy wool, and it will hopefully look a bit nicer. But they do achieve the purpose, and they will give some degree of padding as well underneath the mail. Um, which I'm soon to make. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this process of me making the what essentially equates to the trousers of the medieval man. I promise this will have some more exciting payoff when I can start making the armor for it, but unfortunately the first processes in making any suit of armor or any clothing in general are usually the most boring and depressing processes. I am in no way a tailor, and I would never claim to be. This is very amateur, but I think it achieves the purpose that I want. I, I want to make my own suit of armor, and I don't think I can do that if I delegate off parts of this to other people who can make stuff for me.